Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 13. Fundamental and Technical Analysis Fundamental Analysis Security analysis based on fundamental facts about a company as revealed through its financial statements and an analysis of economic conditions that affect the company's business. Technical Analysis A method of market and security analysis that studies investor attitudes and psychology as revealed in charts of stock price movements and trading volumes to predict future price action. Efficient Market Hypothesis The theory that a stock's price reflects all available information and reflects its true value. Random Walk Theory the theory that stock price movements are random and bear no relationship to past movements. Rational expectations hypothesis. School of economic theory which argues that investors are rational thinkers and can make intelligent economic decisions after evaluating all available information. Emerging growth industries. Brand new industries in the early stages of growth, often considered as speculative because they are introducing new products that may or may not be accepted and may face strong competition from other new entrants. Growth industry, an industry in which sales and earnings are consistently expanding at a faster rate than in most other industries. Mature industry, an industry that experiences slower, more stable growth rates in profit and revenue than growth or emerging industries, for example. Declining industry, an industry moving from the maturity stage. It tends to grow at rates slower than the overall economy, or the growth rate actually begins to decline. Economies of scale, an economic principle whereby the per unit cost of producing each unit of output falls as the volume of production increases. Typically, a company that achieves economies of scale lowers the average cost per unit through increased production since fixed costs are shared over an increased number of goods. Cyclical industry, an industry that is particularly sensitive to swings in economic conditions. Cyclical industries tend to rise quickly when the economy does well and fall quickly when the economy contracts. Defensive industry, an industry with a record of stable earnings and continuous dividend payments, and which has demonstrated relative stability in poor economic conditions. Blue Chip, an active, leading, nationally known common stock with a record of continuous dividend payments and other strong investment qualities. The implication is that the company is of good investment value. Speculative Industry Industries in which risk and uncertainty are unusually high because analysts lack definitive information. Shares in these companies are called speculative shares. Chart analysis, the use of charts and patterns to forecast buy and sell decisions. Support level, a price level at which a security stops falling because the number of investors willing to buy the security is greater than the number of investors wishing to sell the security. Resistance level, the opposite of a support level, a price level at which the security begins to fall as the number of sellers exceeds the number of buyers of the security. Reversal patterns, Formations that usually precede a sizable advance or decline in stock prices. Continuation pattern. A chart formation indicating that the current trend will continue. Head and shoulders formation. A trend reversal pattern that can occur either at a market top, called a head and shoulders top formation, or at a market bottom, called an inverse head and shoulders or head and shoulders bottom formation. The formation consists of a shoulder, a head, and a second shoulder and the breaking of a neckline. Neckline. The line joining the two recovery points in a head and shoulders formation. The breaking of a neckline, either a downside breakout or upside breakout, accompanied by increased volume may be considered confirmation of a change in trend. Quantitative analysis. A form of technical analysis that relies on statistics to construct indicators and has thus been greatly enhanced by computer technology. Moving average. The average of security or commodity prices calculated by adding the closing prices for the underlying security over a predetermined period and dividing the total by the time period selected. Sentiment indicators. Measure investor expectations or the mood of the market. These indicators measure how bullish or bearish investors are. Contrarian investors use sentiment indicators to determine what most investors expect prices to do in the future so they can move in the opposite direction. Cycle analysis. Used to forecast when the market will start moving in a particular direction and when it will ultimately reach its peak or trough. The theory of cycle analysis is based on the assumption that cyclical forces drive price movements in the marketplace. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 14, Company Analysis. Capitalization or capital structure. The total dollar amount of all debt, preferred in common stock, and retained earnings of a company can also be expressed in percentage terms. Earnings per common share. 
a financial ratio that shows the earnings available to each common share. Financial ratios. Financial calculations based on a company's financial statements, often providing clues about the company's financial health. Trend ratio. Analysts identify trends by selecting a base period, treating the figure or ratio for that period as 100, and then dividing it into the comparable ratios for subsequent periods. Liquidity ratios. Financial ratios that are used to judge the company's ability to meet its short-term commitments. Working capital ratio. Current assets of a company divided by its current liabilities, also known as the current ratio. Risk analysis ratios. Financial ratios that show how well the company can deal with its debt obligations. Debt to equity ratio. A ratio that shows whether a company's borrowing is excessive. The higher the ratio, the higher the financial risk. Operating performance ratios. A type of ratio that illustrates how well management is making use of company resources. Net profit margin. A profitability ratio that indicates how efficiently the company is managed after taking into account both expenses and taxes. Value ratios. Financial ratios that show the investor the worth of the company's shares or the return on owning them. Price to earnings ratio or PE ratio. A value ratio that gives investors an idea of how much they are paying for a company's earnings. This is calculated as the current price of the stock divided by the current earnings per share. Working capital. Current assets minus current liabilities. This figure is an indication of the company's ability to meet its short-term debts. Current ratio. A liquidity ratio that shows a company's ability to pay its current obligations from current assets. A current ratio of 2 to 1 is the generally accepted standard, also known as the working capital ratio. Quick ratio. A more stringent measure of liquidity compared with the current ratio. Calculated as current assets less inventory divided by current liabilities. By excluding inventory, the ratio focuses on the company's more liquid assets. Asset coverage ratio. A financial ratio that shows a company's ability to cover its debt obligations with its assets after all non-debt liabilities have been satisfied. Cash flow. A company's profit for a stated period plus any deductions that are not paid out in actual cash, such as depreciation. For an investor, any source of income from an investment including dividends, interest income, rental income, etc. It can also refer to money flowing into or out of an account or portfolio. Cash flow to total debt outstanding ratio. A financial ratio that gauges a company's ability to repay the funds it has borrowed. Short-term borrowings must normally be repaid or rolled over within a year. Interest coverage ratio. A debt ratio that tests the ability of a company to pay the interest charges on its debt and indicates how many times these charges are covered based upon earnings available to pay them. Gross profit margin. A profitability ratio that shows the company's rate of profit after allowing for cost of sales. Return on common equity. A profitability ratio expressed as a percentage representing the amount earned on a company's common shares. Return on equity tells the investor how effectively their money is being put to use. Inventory turnover ratio. Cost of sales divided by inventory. The ratio may also be expressed as the number of days required to sell current inventory by dividing the ratio into 365. Dividend payout ratio. A ratio that measures the amount or percentage of the company's profit that are paid out to shareholders in the form of dividends. Dividend yield. A value ratio that shows the annual dividend rate expressed as a percentage of the current market price of a stock. Dividend yield represents the investor's percentage return on investment at its prevailing market price. Equity value per common share. A financial ratio, also called book value per common share, measures the net asset coverage for each common share if all assets were sold and all liabilities were paid. Dividend discount model. The relationship between a stock's current price and the present value of all future dividend payments. It is used to determine the price at which a stock should be selling based on projected future dividend payments. Preferred dividend coverage ratio. A type of profitability ratio that measures the amount of money a firm has available to pay dividends to their preferred shareholders. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 15. Introduction to the Portfolio Approach. Diversification. Spreading investment risk by buying different types of securities in different companies in different kinds of businesses and or locations. 
capital gain, selling a security for more than its purchase price. For non-registered securities, 50% of the gain would be added to income and taxed at the investor's marginal rate. Capital loss, selling a security for less than its purchase price. Capital losses can only be applied against capital gains. Surplus losses can be carried forward indefinitely and used against future capital gains. Only 50% of the loss can be used to offset any taxable capital loss. Cash flow. A company's profit for a stated period plus any deductions that are not paid out in actual cash, such as depreciation. For an investor, any source of income from an investment including dividends, interest income, rental income, etc. can also refer to money flowing into or out of an account or portfolio. Yield for a bond and stock. It's a return on investment. A stock yield is calculated by expressing the annual dividend as a percentage of the stock's current market price. A bond yield is more complicated, involving annual interest payments plus amortizing the difference between its current market price and par value over the bond's life. Holding period return. A transactional rate of return measure that takes into account all cash flows and increases or decreases in a security's value for any time frame. Time frames can be greater or less than a year. Ex ante. A projection of expected returns. What investors expect to realize as a return. Ex post. The rate of return that was actually received. This historic data is used to measure actual performance. Real rate of return. A rate of return adjusted for the effects of inflation. Risk-free rate of return. The rate of return an investor would receive if he or she invested in a risk-free investment such as a treasury bill. Inflation rate risk. The risk that the value of financial assets and the purchasing power of income will decline due to the impact of inflation on the real returns produced by those financial assets. Business risk. The risk inherent in a company's operations, reflected in the variability in earnings. A weakening in consumer interest or technological obsolescence usually causes the decline. Examples include manufacturers of vinyl records, 8-track recording tapes, and beta video machines. Political risk. The risk associated with a government introducing unfavorable policies making investment in the country less attractive. Political risk also refers to the general instability associated with investing in a particular country. Liquidity risk. The risk that an investor will not be able to buy or sell a security quickly enough because buying or selling opportunities are limited. Interest rate risk. The risk that changes in interest rates will adversely affect the value of an investor's portfolio. For example, a portfolio with a large holding of long-term bonds is vulnerable to significant loss from changes in interest rates. Foreign exchange rate risk. The risk associated with an investment in a foreign security or any investment that pays in a denomination other than Canadian dollars. The investor is subject to the risk that the foreign currency may depreciate in value. Default risk. The risk that a debt security issuer will be unable to pay interest on the prescribed date or the principal at maturity. Default risk applies to debt securities, not equities, since equity dividend payments are not contractual. Systematic risk. A non-controllable, non-diversifiable risk that is common to all investments within a given asset class. With equities, it is called market risk. With fixed income securities, it would be interest rate risk. Non-systematic risk, also known as specific risk. Non-systematic risk is the risk that the price of a specific security or a specific group of securities will change in price to a different degree or in a different direction from the market as a whole. Standard deviation. A statistical measure of risk. The larger the standard deviation, the greater the volatility of returns and therefore, the greater the risk. Beta. A measure of the sensitivity, in other words volatility of a stock or a mutual fund to movements in the overall stock market. The beta for the market is considered to be 1. A fund that mirrors the market such as an index fund would also have a beta of 1. Funds or stocks with a beta greater than 1 are more volatile than the market and are therefore riskier. A beta less than 1 is not as volatile and can be expected to rise and fall by less than the overall market. Correlation. A measure of the relationship between two or more securities. If two securities mirror each other's movements perfectly, they are said to have a positive 1 correlation. Combining securities with a high positive correlation does not reduce the risk of a portfolio. Combining securities that move in the exact opposite direction from each other are said to have perfect negative 1 correlation. Combining two securities with perfect negative correlation reduces risk. Very few, if any, securities have a perfect negative correlation. 
However, risk in a portfolio can be reduced if the combined securities have low positive correlations. Volatility. A measure of the amount of change in the daily price of a security over a specified period of time, usually given as the standard deviation of the daily price changes of that security on an annual basis. Alpha. A statistical measure of the value a fund manager adds to the performance of the fund managed. If alpha is positive, the manager has added value to the portfolio. If alpha is negative, the manager has underperformed the market. Active investment strategy. The investor or manager employs active management with the aim of outperforming a benchmark portfolio or index on a risk-adjusted basis through active security selection. Bottom-up analysis. An investment approach that seeks out undervalued companies. A fund manager may find companies whose low share prices are not justified. They would buy these securities and when the market finally realizes that they are undervalued, the share prices will rise, giving the astute bottom-up manager a profit. Top-down analysis. A type of fundamental analysis. First, general trends in the economy are analyzed. This information is then combined with industries and companies within those industries that should benefit from the general trends identified. Passive investment strategy. The investor or manager employing a passive investment strategy would attempt to replicate the performance of a specific market index without trying to beat it. Indexing. A portfolio management style that involves buying and holding a portfolio of securities that matches closely or exactly the composition of a benchmark index. Buy and hold. A passive investment approach where the investor or manager buys and holds a portfolio of securities for a long period of time. Sector rotation. A top-down approach to investment, focusing on analyzing the prospects of the overall economy and investing in those sectors that are expected to outperform. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 16, The Portfolio Management Process. Asset Allocation. Apportioning investment funds among different categories of assets such as cash, fixed income securities and equities. The allocation of assets is built around an investor's risk tolerance. Investment Policy Statement. The agreement between a portfolio manager and a client that provides the guidelines for the manager. Strategic Asset Allocation. An asset allocation strategy that rebalances investment portfolios regularly to maintain a consistent long-term mix. Dynamic Asset Allocation. An asset allocation strategy that refers to the systematic rebalancing, either by time period or by weight, of the securities in the portfolio so that they match the long-term benchmark asset mix among the various asset classes. Tactical Asset Allocation An asset allocation strategy that involves adjusting a portfolio to take advantage of perceived inefficiencies in the prices of securities in different asset classes or within sectors. Benchmark a standard against which an investment or portfolio is measured. A common benchmark is the T-bill rate plus some sort of performance benchmark. For example, the T-bill rate plus 4%. A benchmark could also be a market index. For example, the S&P TSX Composite Index. Risk Adjusted Rate of Return. A measure of how much risk is involved to produce a return. Risk adjusted measures can be applied to individual securities as well as to portfolios. Sharp Ratio. A ratio measure of the portfolio's risk-adjusted rate of return using standard deviation as the measure of risk. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 17, Mutual Funds, Structure and Regulation. Mutual Fund, an investment fund operated by a company that uses the proceeds from shares and units sold to investors to invest in stocks, bonds, derivatives, and other financial securities. Mutual funds offer investors the advantages of diversification and professional management and are sold on a load or no load basis. Mutual fund shares or units are redeemable on demand at the fund's current net asset value per share or NAVPS. Managed product, a pool of capital gathered to buy securities according to a specific investment mandate. The pool seeds a fund managed by an investment professional that is paid a management fee to carry out the mandate. Active management, Investment management that takes an active as opposed to a passive role when managing investments. Active fund managers make investment decisions based on their outlook for the markets and securities in which they invest. In almost all cases, active fund managers intend to outperform the return on a specific benchmark index. Passive management. Managers of passively managed funds do not make security selections. They assume only the systematic risk associated with investing in a particular asset class. 
The most common type of passively managed fund is one that attempts to replicate the returns of a market index. Fun Facts A disclosure document designed to give mutual fund investors key information about a fund. The document is limited to two double-sided pages in length and provides timely information that would be material to an investment decision. Offering Price The price that an investor pays to purchase shares in a mutual fund. The offering price includes the charge or load that is levied when the purchase is made. Net asset value per share. For a mutual fund, net asset value per share represents the market value of the fund's share per unit and is calculated as total assets of a corporation less its liabilities, then divided by the total units outstanding. Pre-authorized contribution plan. A pre-authorized plan to make regular purchases in small amounts. Annual information form, or AIF. A document in which an issuer is required to disclose information about presently known trends, commitments, events, or uncertainties that are reasonably expected to have a material impact on the issuer's business, financial condition, or results of operations. Although investors are typically not provided with the AIF, the prospectus must state that it is available on request. System for Electronic Document Analysis and Retrieval, or SEDAR, or CEDAR. CEDAR facilitates the electronic filing of securities information as required by the securities regulatory agencies in Canada and allows for the public dissemination of information collected in the filing process. Front End Load A sales charge applied to the purchase price of a mutual fund when the fund is originally purchased. No Load Fund A fund that does not charge a fee to purchase or redeem units. Money Market the part of the capital market in which short-term financial obligations are bought and sold. These include treasury bills and other federal government securities and commercial paper and bankers' acceptances and other instruments with one year or less left to maturity. Longer-term securities, when their term shortens to the limits mentioned, are also traded in the money market. Open-end trust. The most common structure for a mutual fund. An unincorporated open-end trust structure allows the trust to avoid taxation by flowing capital gains and income, net of fees and expenses, to unit holders. Trust deed. This is the formal document that outlines the agreement between the issuer and the holders. In the case of bonds, it outlines such things as the coupon rate, if interest is paid semi-annually and when, and any other terms and conditions between both parties. Simplified Prospectus. A condensed prospectus distributed by mutual fund companies upon request to purchasers and potential purchasers of fund units or shares. Custodian. A firm that holds the securities belonging to a mutual fund or a segregated fund for safekeeping. The custodian can be either the insurance company itself or a qualified outside firm based in Canada. Registrar. Usually a trust company appointed by a company to monitor the issuing of common or preferred shares. When a transaction occurs, the registrar receives both the old cancel certificate and the new certificate from the transfer agent and records and signs the new certificate. The registrar is in effect an auditor checking on the accuracy of the work of the transfer agent, although in most cases the registrar and transfer agent are the same trust company. Transfer Agent An agent, usually a trust company, appointed by a corporation to maintain shareholder records, including purchases, sales, and account balances. The transfer agent may also be responsible for distributing dividend checks. Redemption price. The price at which debt securities or preferred shares may be redeemed at the option of the issuing company. Trailer fee. A fee that a mutual fund manager may pay to the individual or organization that sold the fund for providing services such as investment advice, tax guidance, and financial statements to investors. The fee is paid annually and continues for as long as the investor holds shares in the fund. Early redemption fee. A fee that is typically charged by a mutual fund when the fund is redeemed within 90 days of the initial purchase. A switching fee. A fee charged by a mutual fund when an investor exchanges units of one fund for another fund in the same family or fund company. Management expense ratio. The total expense of operating a mutual fund expressed as a percentage of the fund's net asset value. It includes the management fee as well as other expenses charged directly to the fund such as administrative, audit, legal fees, etc., but excludes brokerage fees. Published rates of return are calculated after the management expense ratio has been deducted. F-Class Fund A type of fee-based fund with a lower MER. To accommodate fee-based financial advisors, many mutual fund companies began offering F-Class mutual funds. These funds reduce or eliminate the double charge. National Instrument 81-101. This legislation deals with mutual fund prospectus and fund facts disclosure. National Instrument 81-102. 
This legislation and its companion policy contain requirements and guidelines for the distribution and advertising of mutual funds. National Registration Database, NRD, a web-based system that permits mutual fund salespersons and investment advisors to file applications for registration electronically. Unsolicited Orders, an order initiated by the investor that is not based on advice provided by the advisor. Know Your Client, KYC, the cardinal rule in making investment recommendations. All relevant information about a client must be known in order to ensure that the registrant's recommendations are suitable. KYC requires you to understand a client's personal and financial circumstances, investment knowledge, investment needs and objectives, risk profile, and investment time horizon. Know Your Product Rule, or KYP. The rule that requires you to know certain aspects of the products you recommend, including a product's features, risks, costs, and potential performance in different types of market environments. Relationship Disclosure A written document provided to the client that includes any information that a reasonable client would consider important about the relationship between the client and the mutual fund dealer and its sales representative. Key Terms and Definitions Found in Chapter 18 Mutual Funds Types and Features Bond fund, a fund that invests primarily in bonds and derives its income mostly from interest payments made by bond issuers to the fund. Balanced fund, invests in both stocks and bonds to provide a balanced mix of income and capital growth. Asset allocation fund, this type of fund has similar objectives to those of balanced funds, but they differ in that they typically do not have to hold a specified minimum percentage of the fund in any class of investment. Equity fund, Funds in the equity category must invest a minimum of 90% of their non-cash assets in equity securities. The main investment objective of equity funds is long-term capital growth. Dividend fund. Invest in preferred shares as well as high-quality common shares with a history of consistently paying dividends. Target date funds. Mutual funds that are structured on the assumption that risk tolerance declines as investors grow older. The fund pursues a growth strategy in its early years by holding more risky assets. It then gradually moves towards less risky assets as the target date approaches. The fund manager adjusts the fund over time, without any action required from the fund holder. Also called target-based funds or life cycle funds. Glide path is the changes in the target date fund's asset allocation mix over time. The fund pursues a growth strategy in its early years by holding more risky assets. It then gradually moves towards less risky assets as the target date approaches. The fund manager adjusts the fund over time, without any action required from the fund holder. Index Fund Sets out to match the performance of a broad market index, such as the S&P TSX Composite Index or the FTSE Canada Universe Bond Index. Index funds are typically categorized under the type of asset class they tend to replicate. Closet Indexing a portfolio strategy whereby the fund manager does not replicate the market exactly, but sticks fairly close to the market weightings by industry sector, country or region, or by the average market capitalization. T3 form, referred to as a statement of trust, income allocations and designations. When a mutual fund is held outside a registered plan, unit holders of an unincorporated fund are sent a T3 form by the respective fund. T5 form, referred to as a statement of investment income. When an incorporated fund is held outside a registered plan, shareholders are sent a T5 form by the respective fund. Adjusted cost base. The deemed cost of an asset representing the sum of the amount originally paid plus any additional costs such as brokerage fees and commissions. Right of redemption. A mutual fund's shareholders have a continuing right to withdraw their investment in the fund simply by submitting their shares to the fund itself and receiving in return the dollar amount of their net asset value. This characteristic is a hallmark of mutual funds. Payment for the securities that have been redeemed must be made by the fund within three business days from the determination of the net asset value. Systematic Withdrawal Plan A plan that enables set amounts to be withdrawn from a mutual fund or a segregated fund on a regular basis. Ratio Withdrawal Plan A systematic withdrawal plan where the investor receives an annual income from the fund by redeeming a specified percentage of fund holdings each year. Fixed Dollar Withdrawal Plan a systematic withdrawal plan where the fund holder chooses a specified dollar amount to be withdrawn on a monthly or quarterly basis. Fixed period withdrawal plan. A systematic withdrawal plan where a specified amount is withdrawn over a predetermined period with the intent that all capital will be exhausted when the plan ends. Life expectancy adjusted withdrawal plan. 
Withdrawals are designed to deplete the entire investment by the end of the plan while providing as high an income as possible during the plan holder's expected lifetime. The amount withdrawn on each date is based on periods that are continually readjusted to the changing life expectancy of the plan holder. Readjustments are based on mortality tables. Time-weighted rate of return, TWRR. A measure of return calculated by averaging the return for each subperiod in which a cash flow occurs into a return for a reporting period. Daily valuation method, a method of calculating the NAV per share of a mutual fund. The incremental change in the value of a fund from day to day is expressed as an index from which the return can be calculated. This method of calculation is beneficial for mutual funds, which generally calculate the NAV per share daily. It greatly simplifies their return calculation at the end of the month. Modified Dietz method. This method of fund valuation reduces the extensive calculations of the daily valuation method by providing a good approximation. It assumes a constant rate of return through the period, eliminating the need to value the portfolio on the date of each cash flow. The modified Dietz method weights each cash flow by the length of time it is held in the portfolio. Peer group, a group of managed products, particularly mutual funds, with a similar investment mandate. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 19, Exchange Traded Funds. Exchange Traded Funds, or ETFs, they are open-end mutual fund trusts that hold the same stocks in the same proportion as those included in a specific stock index. Shares of an exchange traded fund trade on major stock exchanges. Like index mutual funds, ETFs are designed to mimic the performance of a specified index by investing in the constituent companies included in that index. Like the stocks in which they invest, shares can be traded throughout the trading day. Active ETF an ETF where the portfolio manager takes an active role in investment selection. ETF Facts, a summary disclosure document that ETFs are required to produce and file. Designated Broker, a designated broker has a contractual agreement with an ETF company to aid in the creation and redemption of ETF units. Prescribed Number of Units, increments of shares, typically consisting of 10,000, 25,000 or 50,000 shares set by the respective ETF company are called the prescribed number of units. In-kind exchange, the process where a basket of stocks is exchanged for ETF units rather than for cash. Tracking error, the simple difference between the return on an underlying index or reference asset and the return on the ETF that tracks the index or reference asset. Sampling, the process by which the portfolio manager selects a smaller sample of securities and their weighting to best match the performance of the overall index. Commodity ETF, Commodity ETFs are focused on commodity holdings or holdings that replicate or are related to commodities. Three different types of commodity ETFs include physical-based, futures-based, or equity-based ETFs. Full replication. The ETF holds all of the stocks in the same weight as the respective index. The full replication process tracks extremely close to the benchmark index with minimal tracking error. Rules-based ETF. Take a goal-oriented approach rather than following a standard index. Rules-based ETFs might follow on areas of the market that offer higher returns or lower risks than traditional indexes. Synthetic ETF. Constructed with derivatives, such as swaps, to achieve the return effect of the index. As a result, the exposure of synthetic ETFs is notional rather than real. Leveraged ETF. An ETF that delivers daily investment results that correspond to a multiple of the daily performance of a reference index. Inverse ETF, an ETF that seeks to replicate net of expenses the inverse performance of a reference index. Physical-based ETF, an ETF that invests in the commodity directly. They are limited to only a few storable, non-perishable commodities, such as gold and silver. Spot price, the current cash market price of a commodity or financial instrument that is available for immediate delivery. Futures-based exchange-traded fund. ETFs that invest in futures contracts of different commodities with an underlying portfolio of money market instruments to cover the full value of the contracts. As near-term contracts approach expiration, they are rolled over into more distant contracts. Roll yield loss. The loss that results when a near-term futures contract approaches expiration and is rolled over into more distant contract. Equity-based exchange-traded fund. Commodity ETF that invest in listed companies that are involved in exploration and development or in the processing or refining of a commodity. Covered Call ETF. ETFs that employ covered calls to enhance the yield and reduce the volatility of owning the underlying stock or portfolio. Core Holdings. 
In the context of ETFs, core holdings are typically passive ETF investments intended to provide the majority of returns as opposed to satellite holdings which are more focused on riskier sector ETF holdings. Satellite holdings. Holdings that are focused on riskier sectors of the markets. Satellite holdings are used to boost returns above the core asset returns. Exchange traded notes or ETNs. Exchange traded debt obligations issued by a bank that promises to pay investors a return on their investment based on the performance of a specific reference asset such as an index or another benchmark. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 20. Alternative Investments – Benefits, Risks, and Structure Alternative Investment – An asset class that is different from the traditional three board asset classes of equities, bonds, and cash. Generally categorized for portfolio management analysis into three groups, alternative strategy funds, alternative assets, and private equity. Alternative asset. Alternative assets refer to real assets held directly or indirectly by an investor. Real assets include commodities, real estate, and collectibles. Efficient frontier. The curve that reflects the most efficient portfolios for all levels of risk. Drawdown. A cash management, open market operation pursued by the Bank of Canada to influence interest rates. A drawdown refers to the transfer of deposits to the Bank of Canada from the direct clearers, effectively draining the supply of available cash balances. Drawdown also refers to peak to trough investment declines during a specific period, expressed as a percentage of the peak value. Individual drawdowns measure the percentage loss an investor would have realized if an investment was bought at its peak and subsequently sold at its lowest point. First order risk, market induced or systematic exposure to changes in the general direction of equity, fixed income, currency and commodity markets that cannot be reduced through diversification. Second order risk, second order risks include liquidity, leverage, deal break, default, counterparty, trading, concentration, pricing model and trading model risks. Unlike first order risk, second order risk is not related to the market but to other aspects of trading such as dealing, implementing arbitrage structures, or pricing illiquid or infrequently valued securities. Operational risk. The significant risk of potential system failures, as well as faulty settlement, reporting, and accounting procedures that can be part of the small, newly created businesses that typify alternative strategy funds. Hedge funds. Lightly regulated pools of capital in which the hedge fund manager invests a significant amount of his or her own capital into the fund and whose offering memorandum allows for the fund to execute aggressive strategies that are unavailable to mutual funds, such as short selling. Accredited Investor Exemption An exemption that allows an accredited investor to purchase securities without receiving a prospectus. Minimum Investment Exemption An investor exemption from receiving a prospectus based on a prescribed minimum investment. NI 45-106 sets the minimum across Canada at $150,000. Accredited Investor An individual or institutional investor who meets certain minimum requirement relating to income, net worth, or investment knowledge. Offering Memorandum This document is prepared by the dealer involved in a new issue outlining some of the salient features of the new issue, but not the price or other issue-specific details. It is used as a pre-marketing tool in assessing the market for the issue as well as for obtaining expressions of interest. Offering Memorandum Exemption The Offering Memorandum Exemption waives the requirement for a fund to be distributed with a prospectus. High Watermark Used in the context of how a hedge fund manager is compensated, the high watermark sets the bar above which the fund manager is paid a portion of the profits earned for the fund. Hurdle Rate the rate that a hedge fund must earn before its manager is paid an incentive fee. Product transparency. The level of ongoing information regarding investment products, evaluated on level of details provided, frequency of communication, and time between fund reporting date and date of communication to investors. Alternative mutual fund. A type of mutual fund that is permitted greater usage of derivatives, leverage, short selling, and investments in illiquid assets than conventional mutual funds but not the extent of hedge funds, also known as liquid alternatives or liquid alts. Fund of hedge funds. A portfolio of hedge funds overseen by a manager who determines which hedge funds to invest in and how much to invest in each. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 21. Alternative investments, strategies and performance. Relative value strategies. A type of hedge fund that attempts to profit by exploiting irregularities or discrepancies in the pricing of related stocks, bonds, or derivatives. Event-driven strategies. 
a type of hedge fund that seeks to profit from unique events such as mergers, acquisitions, stock splits, or buybacks. Directional strategies, a type of hedge fund that places a bet on the anticipated movements in the market prices of equities, fixed income securities, foreign currencies, and commodities. Equity market neutral strategy, designed to exploit inefficiencies and opportunities in the equity market by creating simultaneously long and short matched equity portfolios of approximately the same size with the goal of having zero or very low beta directional exposure. Fixed income arbitrage strategy, attempts to profit from price anomalies between related interest rate securities and the derivatives, including government and non-government bonds, mortgage-backed securities, options, swaps, and forward rate agreements. Merger strategy or risk arbitrage strategy. Investing simultaneously in long and short positions of the common stock of companies involved in a proposed merger or acquisition, usually involving taking a long position in the company being acquired and a short position in the acquiring company. High yield bond strategy. Investing generally using little or no leverage in high yield debt securities, also known as junk bonds, of a company the manager feels may get a credit upgrade or is a potential takeover target. Distressed securities strategy. Invest in the equity or debt securities of companies that are in financial difficulty and face bankruptcy or reorganization. These generally sell at deep discounts, reflecting their issuer's weak credit quality. Long short equity strategy. Managers try to buy stocks they feel will rise more in a bull market than the overall market and sell short stocks that will rise less. In a down market, good short selections are expected to decline more than the market and good long selections will fall less. Global macro strategy. Invest in all major markets, including equities, bonds, currencies, and commodities with strategy based on predictions for major events affecting entire economies such as shifts in government policy that alter interest rates, thereby affecting currency, stock, and bond markets. Emerging Markets Alternative Funds Invest in equity and debt securities of companies in emerging markets by using derivatives, short selling, and other complex investment strategies. As some emerging markets do not allow short selling and do not have viable derivative markets, these funds may not be able to hedge. As a result, performance can be volatile. Short Bias a fund where the net position must always be short. The fund may have long positions, but on a net basis, the fund must constantly be short. Absolute risk. The total variability or volatility of returns, incorporating all sources of risk embedded in returns, including first order risks and second order risks. Absolute risk does not distinguish between upside and downside volatility. Skew. Measures the extent to which a distribution is tilted towards negative or positive returns. Positive skew indicates a tendency to obtain returns above what is observed with the normal distribution. Negative skew indicates a tendency to obtain returns below the normal distribution. Kurtosis measures the tendency of a return distribution either to have values that collect around the average of all returns, which is lower kurtosis, or conversely, to have values that collect towards the tails of the distribution, which is higher kurtosis. Maximum drawdown the largest drawdown during a specific period. Time to recovery. Number of months required to move from a trough to a new peak. Some alternative strategy fund managers and analysts define time to recovery as the time from peak to trough to peak. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 22. Other managed products. Segregated funds. Insurance companies sell these funds as an alternative to conventional mutual funds. Like mutual funds, segregated funds offer a range of investment objectives and categories of securities like equity funds, bond funds, balance funds, etc. These funds have the unique feature of guaranteeing that regardless of how poorly the fund performs, at least a minimum percentage, usually 75% or more, of the investor's payments into the fund will be returned when the fund matures. Death Benefit the amount that a segregated fund policy pays to the beneficiary or the estate when the market value of the segregated fund is lower than the guaranteed amount on the death of the annuitant. Creditor protection. Segregated funds offer protection from creditors in the event of bankruptcy because segregated funds are an insurance product and the insurance proceeds generally fall outside the provisions of bankruptcy legislation. Individual Variable Insurance Contract, IVIC. The term used in the IVIC guidelines to describe a segregated fund contract. Contract holder, the owner of a segregated fund contract. 
Canadian Life and Health Insurance Association Incorporated, CLHIA. The National Trade Group of the Life Insurance Industry, which is actively involved in overseeing applications and setting industry standards. Office of the Superintendent of Financial Institutions, OSFI. The federal regulatory agency whose main responsibilities regarding insurance companies and segregated funds are to ensure that the companies issuing the funds are financially solvent. Assurus, a not-for-profit company whose member firms are issuers of life insurance contracts and whose mandate is to provide protection to contract holders against the insolvency of a member company. Maturity guarantee, the minimum dollar value of the contract after the guarantee period, usually 10 years. This amount is also known as the annuity benefit. Notional units, a unit that exists in theory and is representative of something else. Annuitant, person on whose life the maturity and death benefit guarantees are based. It can be the contract holder or someone else designated by the contract holder. In registered plans, the annuitant and contract holder must be the same person. Insurable interest, a person is considered to have an insurable interest in the life or health of another person from whom they derive a financial or other kind of benefit from that person. Beneficiary. The individual or individuals who have been designated to receive the death benefit as part of a segregated fund or designated to receive assets as part of a testator's will. Beneficiaries may be either revocable or irrevocable. Revocable designation. A contract where the beneficiary's entitlements under the segregated fund contract can be terminated or changed without his or her consent. Irrevocable designation. A contract where the beneficiary's entitlements under the segregated fund contract cannot be terminated or changed without his or her consent. Reset, a contract provision which allows the segregated fund contract holder to lock in the current market value of the fund and set a new maturity date 10 years after the reset date. Depending on the contract, the reset dates may be chosen by the contract holder or be triggered automatically. Probate, a provincial fee charged for authenticating a will. The fee charged is usually based on the value of the assets in an estate rather than the effort to process the will. Allocation, the administrative procedure by which income generated by the segregated fund's investment portfolio is flowed through to the individual contract holders of the fund. Labor-sponsored venture capital corporations, LSVCC. LSVCCs are investment funds sponsored by labor organizations that have a specific mandate to invest in small to medium-sized businesses. To encourage this mandate, Governments offer generous tax credits to investors in LSVCCs. Closed-end fund. Shares in closed-end investment companies are readily transferable in the open market and are bought and sold like other shares. Capitalization is fixed. Real Estate Investment Trust, or REIT, R-E-I-T. An investment trust that specializes in real estate-related investments, including mortgages, construction loans, land and real estate securities in varying combinations. A REIT invests in and manages a diversified portfolio of real estate. Interval funds, a type of mutual fund that has the flexibility to buy back its outstanding shares periodically, also known as closed and discretionary funds. Income trusts, a type of investment trust that holds investments in the operating assets of a company. Income from these operating assets flows through to the trust, which in turn passes on the income to the trust unit holders. Business trust, Purchases the assets of an underlying company, and the profits and losses resulting from the use of the trust are shared with investors on a proportional basis. Private equity, the financing of firms unwilling or unable to find capital using public means, for example, via the stock or bond markets. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 23, Structured Products. Structured Product a passive investment vehicle financially engineered to provide a specific risk and return characteristic. The value of a structured product tracks the returns of reference security known as an underlying asset. Underlying assets can consist of a single security, a basket of securities, foreign currencies, commodities, or an index. Mortgage-backed securities, bonds that claim ownership to a portion of the cash flows from a group or pool of mortgages. They are also known as mortgage pass-through securities. A servicing intermediary collects the monthly payments from the issuers and after deducting a fee, passes them through or remits them to the holders of the security. The MBS provides liquidity in an otherwise illiquid market. Every month, holders receive a proportional share of the interest and principal payments associated with those mortgages. Principal Protected Note A debt-like instrument with a maturity date whereby the issuer agrees to repay investors the amount originally invested, which is the principal, plus interest. 
The interest rate is tied to the performance of an underlying asset, such as a portfolio of mutual funds or common stocks, a market index, a hedge fund, or a portfolio of hedge funds. Principal protected notes, or PPNs, guarantee only the return of the principal. Market-linked guaranteed investment certificate. Market-linked GICs combine the guarantee of the principal invested with some of the growth potential of an underlying market in the form of a stock index, mutual fund, or ETF. Asset-backed securities, or ABS. A short to medium term bond with equal claim on the principal and interest cash flows from a pool of underlying receivables. Split shares. A security that has been created to divide or split the investment attributes of an underlying portfolio of common shares into separate components that satisfy different investment objectives. The preferred shares receive the majority of the dividends from the common shares held by the split share corporation. The capital shares receive the majority of any capital gains on the common shares. Prepayment risk. The risk that the issuer of a bond might prepay or redeem early some or all principal outstanding on the loan or mortgage. Zero coupon bonds plus option structure. The issuer of a principal protected note using the zero coupon bond plus option structure invests most of the proceeds in a zero coupon bond that has the same maturity as the PPN. The zero coupon bond guarantees the return of principal at maturity. The remainder of the proceeds is invested in an option on the underlying asset. Capital shares. One of the components of split shares. Capital shares receive the majority of capital gains from the underlying common shares. Asset securitization. The process of aggregating financial assets and transforming them into marketable securities. Assets that are typically securitized include mortgages, loans, and corporate receivables. Special purpose vehicle. An entity set up to purchase and manage assets as part of an asset-backed security issue. The issuer typically controls the SPV and issues ABS securities to investors. Tranches. An issue of securities divided into a number of classes. Each tranche has its own level of credit risk and either a fixed or variable rate of return. The tranches are sold separately to investors seeking the appropriate risk to return opportunity. Asset-backed commercial paper, ABCP. A type of security that has a maturity date of less than one year, typically in the range of 90 to 180 days, with a legal and design structure of an asset-backed security. Rollover risk. The risk that the issuer will be unable to refinance or renew the underlying assets when an asset-backed security matures. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 24, Canadian Taxation. Fiscal year, a company's accounting year. Due to the nature of particular businesses, some companies do not use the calendar year for their bookkeeping. A typical example is the department store that finds December 31st too early a date to close its books after the Christmas rush, and so it ends its fiscal year on January 31st. Marginal tax rate. The tax rate that would have to be paid on any additional dollars of taxable income earned. Carrying charges. Deductible expenses for tax purposes. Registered Retirement Savings Plans, RRSP. An investment vehicle available to individuals to defer tax on a specified amount of money to be used for retirement. The holder invests money in one or more of a variety of investment vehicles which are held in trust under the plan. Income tax on contributions and earnings within the plan is deferred until the money is withdrawn at retirement. RSPs can be transferred into registered retirement income funds upon retirement. Registered Education Savings Plans, RESPs a type of government-sponsored savings plan used to finance a child's post-secondary education. Tax-free savings account, TFSA, a savings vehicle whereby income earned within a TFSA will not be taxed in any way throughout an individual's lifetime. In addition, there are no restrictions on the timing or amount of withdrawals from a TFSA, and the money withdrawn can be used for any purpose. Self-directed registered retirement savings plan, a type of RSP whereby the holder invests funds or contributes certain acceptable assets such as securities directly into a registered plan, which is usually administered for a fee by a Canadian financial services company. Registered Retirement Income Fund, or RIF, a tax deferral vehicle available to RSP holders. The plan holder invests the funds in the RIF and must withdraw a certain amount each year. Income tax would be due on the funds when withdrawn. Superficial Losses occur when an investment is sold and then repurchased at any time in a period that is 30 days before or after the sale. Deem disposition. Under certain circumstances, taxation rules state that a transfer of property has occurred even without a purchase or sale, like there is a deemed disposition on death or immigration from Canada. 
Registered Pension Plan, RPP, a trust registered with Canada Revenue Agency and established by an employer to provide pension benefits for employees when they retire. Both employer and employee may contribute to the plan and contributions are tax deductible. See also Defined Contribution Plan and Defined Benefit Plan. Pension Adjustment, PA, the amount of contributions made or the value of benefits accrued to a member of an employer-sponsored retirement plan for a calendar year. The PA enables the individual to determine the amount that may be contributed to an RSP that would be in addition to contributions into a registered pension plan. Past Service Pension Adjustment, PSPA. An employer may increase a member's pension by the granting of additional past service benefits to an employee in a defined benefit plan. Plan members who incur a PSPA will have their RSP contribution room reduced by the amount of this adjustment. Money Purchase Plan, MPP. A type of registered pension plan where the amount contributed is known but the dollar amount of the pension to be received is unknown, also called a defined contribution plan. Defined benefit plan, a type of registered pension plan in which the annual payout is based on a formula. The plan pays a specific dollar amount at retirement using a predetermined formula. Contribution in kind, transferring securities into an RSP. The general rules are that when an asset is transferred, there is a deemed disposition. Any capital gain would be reported and taxes paid. Any capital losses that result cannot be claimed. Withholding tax. An amount of income tax that a financial institution is required to deduct by law from a payment made to the owner. Spousal Registered Retirement Savings Plan. A special type of RSP to which one spouse contributes to a plan registered in the beneficiary spouse's name. The contributed funds belong to the beneficiary, but the contributor receives the tax deduction. If the beneficiary removes funds from the spousal plan in the year of the contribution or in the subsequent two calendar years, the contributor must pay taxes on the withdrawn amount. Annuity. A contract usually sold by life insurance companies that guarantees an income to the beneficiary or annuitant at some time in the future. The income stream can be very flexible. The original purchase price may be either a lump sum or a stream of payments. See Deferred Annuity and Immediate Annuity. Canada Education Savings Grant, CESG, an incentive program for those investing in a registered education savings plan, whereby the federal government will make a matching grant of a maximum of $500 to $600 per year of the first $2,500 contributed each year to the RESP of a child under age 18. Pooled Registered Pension Plan, a type of retirement savings plan offered by the federal government the plan is designed to address the gap in employer pension plan coverage by providing Canadians with an accessible, large-scale, low-cost pension plan. Income splitting. A tax planning strategy whereby the higher earning spouse transfers income to the lower earning spouse to reduce taxable income. Attribution rules. A Canada Revenue Agency rule stating that an investor cannot avoid paying taxes at their marginal rate by transferring assets to other family members who have lower personal tax rates. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 25, Fee-Based Accounts. Fee-Based Accounts, a type of account that bundles various services into a fee based on the client's assets under management, for example, 1-3% to of client assets. Managed Account, an account whereby a licensed portfolio manager has the discretion to decide and execute suitable investment decisions on behalf of clients. Discretionary Account, a securities account where the client has given specific written authorization to a partner, director, or qualified portfolio manager to select securities and execute trades for him. Exchange Traded Fund Wraps A discretionary account where a single annual fee based on the account's total assets is charged. Often directed by a single portfolio manager, the managed account holds a basket of ETFs for security selection. The underlying ETFs tend to be passive in the investment management. Mutual fund wraps are established with a selection of individual funds managed within a client's account. Mutual fund wraps differ from funds of funds. The client holds the actual funds within their account, as opposed to a fund that simply invests in other funds. In most cases, a separate account is established for the client and the selected funds are held inside the dedicated account. Overlay Manager The overlay manager works with advisors and servicing clients. This is not a referral, but a partnership, in which the advisor retains the client's assets. The service incorporates the existing trusted relationship of the advisor, whom the client has become comfortable dealing with. Separately Managed Account A managed product structure whereby individual accounts are created for each investor. 
In either case, an investment manager is guided by an investment mandate. Unified Managed Account A type of fee-based account that includes the same benefits as multidisciplinary accounts. Enhancements include performance reports from the respective sub-advisors outlining distinct models contained within the single custody account. Multi-manager accounts, a type of fee-based account that offers clients and their advisors more choice in terms of product and services. Often, clients are aligned with two or more portfolio models, and each portfolio model is a component of the client's greater diversified holdings. Household account, a type of separately managed account that involves the coordination of holdings across a family or household. In this approach, one overall portfolio model is used to coordinate investment management within and across accounts for the family or the household. Private Family Office An extension of the advisor's client servicing approach. In this approach, instead of having only one advisor, a team of professionals handles all of an affluent client's financial affairs within one central location. RoboAdvisor an online investment service that provides clients with automated investment advice. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 26, Working with the Retail Client. Ethics. Defined as the rules or standards governing the behavior of a particular group or profession, a set of moral principles or values, or the study of the general nature of morals and the moral choices made by individuals. Life Cycle Hypothesis. A model used in financial planning that tries to link age with investing. The underlying theory is that an individual's asset mix will change as they grow older. However, the life cycle is not a substitute for the know your client rule. Estate planning. Planning for the orderly transfer of a client's assets from one generation to the next. Testator. A person who has made a will. Beneficiary. The individual or individuals who have been designated to receive the death benefit as part of a segregated fund or designated to receive assets as part of a testator's will. Beneficiaries may be either revocable or irrevocable. Executor. The person who settles the estate and distributes the assets according to the terms of a will. Executors in Ontario are also generally known as estate trustees. Liquidator. The person in Quebec who settles the estate and distributes the assets according to the terms of a will. Intestate. A person who dies without having made a will or having made a will that was subsequently revoked, like by marriage, or otherwise determined to be invalid. Individual executor. The individual selected as the executor of an estate. Estate freeze. A method of minimizing tax liability by creating a structure where the growth of assets transfers directly to the owner's children or spouse. Joint tenancy. Ownership where two or more people own assets together and each owner has equal rights and obligations regarding the asset. Protection Mandate A mandate in Quebec that provides instructions regarding the treatment a person wishes to receive in the event of a terminal illness or incurable injury. Ethical Decision Making Decision making based on the principles of trust, integrity, justice, fairness, honesty, responsibility, and reliability. Duty of Care the responsibility to conduct due diligence before providing advice or recommending products. KYC or Know Your Client. The cardinal rule in making investment recommendations. All relevant information about a client must be known in order to ensure that the registrant's recommendations are suitable. KYC requires you to understand a client's personal and financial circumstances, investment knowledge, investment needs and objectives, risk profile, and investment time horizon. Suitability. A registrant's major concern in making investment recommendations. All information about a client and a security must be analyzed to determine if an investment is suitable for the client in accounts where a suitability exemption does not apply. Key terms and definitions found in Chapter 27, Working with the Institutional Client. Sell side refers to dealers. The term stems from the role broker-dealers play in the underwriting and distribution of new issue securities. Buy side, the term applied to retail and institutional investors since they are the buyers of securities and services provided by the sell side of the market. Institutional client, a legal entity that represents the collective financial interests of a large group. A mutual fund, insurance company, pension fund, and corporate treasury are just a few examples. Direct electronic access, DEA. The process of some institutional clients directly accessing the exchanges electronically via their investment dealers rather than placing orders, usually verbally, with their investment dealer who would in turn execute the transaction. Algorithmic trading. 
the use of sophisticated mathematical algorithms to execute equity trades over electronic trading systems. Axe Sheet, a list of products that a trader wishes to sell or buy as quickly as possible. Prime Brokerage, a bundling of equity trading related services used primarily by hedge funds. Agency Traders or Coverage Trader, Manage trades for institutional clients. They do not trade the dealer member's capital and they trade only when acting on behalf of clients. Agency traders do not merely take orders. They must manage institutional orders with minimal market impact and act as the client's eyes and ears for relevant market intelligence. Liability traders or proprietary trader have the responsibility to manage a dealer's trading capital to encourage market flows and facilitate the client orders that go into the market while aiming to lose as little of that capital as possible. Liability traders can be considered those who set the direction for agency traders. Whereas agency traders have formal client responsibilities, liability traders have lighter responsibilities or none at all. Market Maker a trader employed by a securities firm who is authorized and required by applicable self-regulatory organizations SROs, to maintain reasonable liquidity in securities markets by making firm bids or offers for one or more designated securities. Analyst. An expert in respect to a specific company or sector. Analysts provide other front office staff with ongoing analytical coverage in their area of specialty. Universal Market Integrity Rules UMIR. A common set of trading rules that are applied in all markets in Canada. UMIR are designed to promote fair and orderly markets. Price spread. The difference between the bid and ask price, also known as the dealer spread. Order flow. The total amount of equity trades shown to a dealer's traders by its institutional clients. Origination. The process of bringing new debt issues to market. Soft dollar arrangement. An arrangement where an investment firm purchases services via commission dollars rather than an invoice for the goods or services provided. Clearing. The process of confirming and matching security trade details. Settlement. The moment of irrevocable exchange of cash and securities. Straight through processing. A continuous real-time investment management database that tracks all security transactions and investments and links the various operating departments of a firm. Trade matching elements. Details that all parties to a trade must confirm before an institutional trade can be cleared and settled. Research Associate Reports to a senior analyst, mainly builds financial or pricing models, and conducts industry or company research and helps write reports and commentary. Investment Banker Responsible for building the dealer's business with respect to corporate and public finance and mergers and acquisition services. Institutional Salesperson their main role is to be a relationship manager, serving as the liaison between the institutional investment dealer and client. Institutional trader. Their main role is to execute orders on behalf of clients as an agency trader or on behalf of the dealer as a liability trader. Responsible designated trader, RDT. Individual assigned by the dealer to carry out market making duties on a stock. Dark pool. An equity marketplace that does not offer pre-trade transparency on trader orders. High Frequency Trading HFT, a subset of algorithmic trading. High Frequency Trading is characterized by a very large number of orders for individual trades of very small size done at extremely high speed.